Hey everyone, what's up? I'm Mike Deary, and in this lesson we're going to learn the song He Gotta Go by Tegan and the Tweeds. Alright, so we're going to start off by learning He Gotta Go by looking at the intro. And what I'm going to do is first just play to the recording so we can look at the part we're going to learn, and then I'll break it down nice and slow for you. So this is in E minor or E blues. It's definitely more of a bluesy rock tune, but E minor is our, kid, our uh, key signature. So let me just play to this intro and I'll show you uh, what we're gonna do. All right, cool. So what we do is start off by playing the big E string twice, just open. And then we're going to use what we call an E7 flat 9 chord. This is a really cool, bluesy, funky chord. Hendrix uses this uh, a bunch in his tunes, like Purple Haze. So what we're going to do is use our middle finger on the 7th fret of the A string, our first finger on the 6th fret of the D string, and our ring finger on the 7th fret of the G string, and then our pinky goes on the 8th fret of the B string. So, sounds really cool and, you know, funky with uh, some distortion on. So we go... All right. Now the next little melody, and there's a lot of little melody fills that bring you from chords, and we're going to be using a mix of open chords and bar chords here. So... What we're going to do now is go open, three, four on the big string, and then I'm going to go to an A power chord. So to do this, I bring my thumb up here to mute the big string so I can hit it and not have it ring out. And then we have an open A, and then this finger is barring the second fret on the D string and the G string. So those are the three strings I want to ring out. So you can see how I kind of put that together. So from the beginning we have... All right, now we're going to hit this chord twice. And the next little melody fill is two open A strings. And then I hit the second fret on the A string and pull off. And use my middle finger on the third fret of the big string. Remember, anytime you hit the open string, it's a good way to buy you time to get to the next chord. Because I gotta go from that um, note here to back to this E7 flat 9 chord. So here we are from the beginning up until now. Okay, and we go back to that chord. So we hit this chord and then we have another melody fill that goes all on the big string. We're going to go open, five, four, three. Okay, so and then we're going to go. So um, we go open, three, open, and then we're going to slide from three to five. And then we're going to play an A7 bar chord. So this is the same, uh, or very similar if you just do an A major bar chord, but take your pinky off. That's an A7 chord. So from this uh, other chord... Uh, okay, good. So let me take it nice and slow right from the beginning. And that's um, kind of like my first loop. Whenever you're practicing a new riff or a new song, it's good to find pieces of it that you could loop together. And what we've done up until now is a good way to loop it. So if I just practice this a bunch of times, it's going to look and sound like this. Okay. 
Good. So there's our, our first loop, and that's the bulk of the main riff. Now, what happens is it, be, it repeats that first part. But now, the second part, we're going to do a little bit different ending. So what I did here was we start with the open E in the chord. Then we go open, five, four, and then open. And now what I do is go into a C7 chord, which is pretty much uh, just a C major open chord, but you put your pinky down on the third fret of the G string. And then I go to B7 so I could take this whole shape and just move it down one and take my first finger off. And that's B7. So. Okay? And that's essentially our whole loop there. Um, now what's going to happen is this whole thing repeats twice and on the second time it's going to go from this B7 right to an E7 and then we're going to stop it real quick. So, And that's our whole intro. So nice and slow here is the whole intro. Good. So that'll lead us up until the first verse and when the vocals kick in. Okay, so what we're going to do is look at the first verse for He Gotta Go. And again, we're going to play to the recording and then we'll break it down. And I'm going to play from right from the first verse all the way until the second verse because it's pretty much um, a kind of long, seamless part. So let's play to the recording and we'll break it down. I told you once, don't mess with me. You were wrong when you set me free I'm not the one who went away And I bought you now in my face Okay, cool. So as you can see, um, there's a lot of cool stuff going on here. Um, the first thing we want to do, it starts off with just these breaks, which is just the E7 chord, and then you mute it. So that's pretty darn simple. Uh, again, your E7, your middle finger goes on the second fret of the A string, and your first finger goes on the first fret of the G string. So I do that, I think it's two or three times, and right before the, the on the last one, I switched to using the E7 flat 9 chord, which you could also use instead of the E7, it's almost just a preference, but right before the other uh, guitar part comes in, we switch to using this chord, and then, so then it plays a little bit, and then we're going to go into the next rhythm. So this next part is based on some really just old school rock uh, blues riffs. And the best way to practice this is, I'm going to go on to, it's on the A, rooted on the A chord. And we're going to do like a power chord with my first finger on the fifth fret of the big string. And you're going to stretch your middle finger to the seventh fret of the A string. Now, then what we're going to do is get our pinky to stretch over to the ninth fret. Um, <laughs> So this is just a really cool kind of standard rock riff. It's a little bit of a stretch, but you want to keep your thumb low and your wrist around so you can really stretch your fingers. And even if uh, before you start, you could just practice moving your pinky back and forth from 9 to 10. So that's what we do. We start with this chord, and then we do the riff. So... 
And that's what we do to start that off with. All right, and then it's gonna go to the A7 bar chord that we did earlier in this song. We did it twice. What we're gonna do though, is actually use upstrokes to accent the higher strings. All right, so the riff so far. Okay, so it kind of combines this riff. And even if you wanted, you could just do that riff twice instead of going to the chords. Um, you know, if, that'll work just fine. But if you want to play it exactly like the song, we start with this riff. Then go to the bar chord. Then it's going to do the same thing on E. So I'm going to move to the 7th fret on the A string and do an E power chord there. And then my pinky is going to rotate between the 11th and 12th fret on the D string. Okay, so you can see how I do that same rhythm. And now I go to E7, and on this bar chord, it's going to be um, the first finger bars on the 7th fret, my ring finger plays the 9th fret on the D string, and my pinky plays the 9th fret on the B string. And same thing, use upstrokes to accent the higher strings. So we got... So these are the two main rhythms that just go back and forth a whole bunch of times. Okay, so you're just going to repeat that and then at the end here, what we're going to do is go back to this C7 um, and what I use is actually um, a little bit of a hybrid chord here. We're going to do um, C uh, middle finger on the third fret of the A string, then second fret on the D string with my first finger, third fret on the G string with my ring finger, and then you could just play these three. But if you want to rest your pinky, you could put that on the third fret of the B string and use this chord shape. So we're going from this So you can see how I get to this and again I could use this C7 if you'd rather just use that that'll work fine as well uh, but in the actual uh, video you can hear those stops and it's just taking this chord shape and going from C and then to B and then what we're going to do is just go right back into that same riff that the song started on. All right. And so it's not, I wouldn't call that, you know, a chorus or anything like that just yet. It just um, plays that same riff just once though. And then it goes right back into the verse or the second verse. So um, yeah, so that's how we play the verse to this song. And then the second verse is going to repeat the whole thing over, and then I believe that takes us to the solo. All right, so what we're going to look at now is the solo to He Gotta Go. Uh, we've played through the intro and then the first and second verses. Um, the verse and the chorus kind of go in together, so uh, remember the second verse is exactly the same as the first, so you're just going to repeat what we did in the first verse, and that will lead us up now to the solo. So let me go ahead and play along to the recording for you, and then we'll break it down. So I'm going to be taking this right from the end of the second verse. Okay, cool. So that is um, the solo. So what we're going to do, we end with those stops, well, with the C and then to the B. So then when I hit this chord, I'm going to do like one last hit because I got to get ready to get up to the 12th fret. 
So save yourself enough time. You know, you want the, the chord to sustain, but what we're gonna do for the first part of the solo is um, we go up to, this is kind of based on our minor pentatonic scale on E, which is at the 12th fret. So what we're gonna do is use our ring finger on the 14th fret of the G string, and then our pinky is gonna be on the 15th fret of the B string. And what we're gonna do is kind of like one of these, um, the bends where you can see how my pinky stays where it is and my ring finger pushes up. And you can see how I have these two other fingers right behind uh, my ring finger on the same string so that they can all help push up together. And what you wanna do is practice bringing the note up and down. You see how I do that? And then it ends on the 12th fret on the G string. And what I do is add a little vibrato at the end. Okay? Now, if you want, you can do this lick here the same way twice in the same position. Um, oh, and also, by the way, there is a, a wah pedal being used on the solo. I'm not worrying about using that here, but if you do have a wah pedal, you're going to want to throw that on and use it um, because that's what's going on in the solo as well. But what we do is start off with this lick, and then it's actually the same thing, but the guitar player here switches to doing it on the B and E string. Um, just to get a little bit of different uh, tonality to it and to get ready for a slide that happens in, on the second one. So if you want to do it twice just in the same position, you can. But if we want to look at exactly what's happening in the recording and in the video, we're going to do it here first. And then we're going to switch to doing it on the 10th fret on the B string. And then my first finger goes on the um, first fret of the... Uh, or I'm sorry, the eighth fret of the E string. And actually, I guess it is a, a little bit different because right here we're doing an A and a C, and then here we're doing it as an A and a, and a uh, or sorry, A and a D here, and then this is A and C. So just a little bit different tonality. Okay, but both will work. So we do that. Get some good vibrato, and then when we do it the second time, we're going to do these slides. So we go from uh, the 8th fret on the B string, we're going to slide to 10, then to 12, and then to 15. So, so from the beginning, And then we do the uh, the same thing one more time. Okay, and then on the, the last part here, we're gonna do another lick and it goes like this. So, so if we do that slow, we're doing some hammer-ons and pull-offs. We start at the seventh fret on the D string. And then we go to the 7th and ninth fret on the G string, but we do a hammer on and pull off. And then it goes to the ninth fret on the D string. And then you're going back to 7 and 9 on the G string. Okay. Uh, play from the 8th fret to the 10th fret on the B string. And then what we're going to do is bend on the 10th fret of the B string. Okay, so we got a full bend. We're going to come down with the bend and pull off to 8. And then go right back into another bend. So when we go into the next bend, we're going to choke it. So we go up, stop it, and then bend right again, and then come down, and then we're just going to hold that note and give it some vibrato. So, 
once again. So the key to being a really good soloist, uh, bending and vibrato are the two things that are more advanced techniques but really help you sound really spit and polish. So you know when you're when you're practicing really f spend a lot of time on your bending and your um your vibrato so again here's the end lick okay and again you don't need to be exact with it but if you want to you know you could just kind of work with the recording a lot so again here's the whole solo Okay, awesome. Um, so that's your solo, and we're going to look at the outro um, all the way, um, or from past the solo all the way to the end of the song. All right, so now we're going to look at the last part to He Gotta Go. Uh, we've gotten up to the guitar solo, so what we have left is the keyboard solo or the organ solo, and then one more chorus, and then the song ends. So um, what we do when we end on that um, guitar solo, we're just going to hold this note out, and then what we do is we come back in with our rhythm on the E chord here. And this starts the keyboard solo, but what we're going to do is just play through the regular verse riff um, that's also kind of the chorus riff uh, with the, the rock rhythm here. So after this note, we're going to go into E. So then it's just going to repeat that a whole bunch of times, and then it's going to go into our ending, um, and then to the end of the song. So uh, again, like always, let me play to the recording, and then um, we'll just make a few more notes. But we know all the parts already that are going to happen, we've played them already, so we just got to put them in the right order. So this is going to take us from the end of the solo uh, to the end of the song. Oop, let's try that one more time. Okay, cool. So as you can see, like I said, uh, we know all these parts already. It's just, uh, you know, for the keyboard solo, we just keep our rhythm going, and then it goes right into the end chorus, which plays the exact same rhythm. So we're just going to keep doing this rhythm that we did. And then it goes into the breaks once again with the C7 to the B7. And then we're going to go right back into the intro rhythm. finish at the end, and then it ends on the E7 chord, and then if you want, you can kind of do a little run at the, your pentatonic scale, and then it ends on the E7. And uh, 
Okay, so what I'm going to do right here is do a uh, full play along to He Gotta Go by Tegan and the Tweed. So uh, check it out. This is me playing along to the whole song. Don't mess with me You were wrong when you set me free I'm not the one who went away And I don't you not in my face That you're dying to see If you and I were really meant to be I figured out I'm ahead of the game I know that it's bad That's He Gotta Go by Tegan and the Tweeds.